Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we are talking about another hidden feature, a tool that is right there in the Postman, but nobody talks about it. And we're going to discuss exactly same in this video. Hey there everyone, my name is Itesh and I've been writing code for almost a decade now and I love to make YouTube videos. In case you are new here or checking the channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button but if you are all time a uh, listener and viewer of the channel, go ahead and put that in the comment section that we are here to learn something new because I'm going to show you exactly that. There are so many hidden tools and features in the Postman that I love to talk about and I don't know, somehow they are just being pushed under the rug and nobody knows about them, they are not that much popular, but I'm here to change exactly that. So do you know that Postman has a hidden low-code, no-code tool? And no, not the way that you, all the low-code, no-code tools that you don't like, no, it's not like that. It's really different and it's right there, it's not a paid product, it's available right in your machine and you never knew about it. There is so much more we can do with that. And let me show you how it works and you're gonna be absolutely loving it. And all those requests that comes from all of your non-tech uh, colleagues, from your sales team, from your marketing team, they, they want to check some things from your database, uh, but for that you have to just write some queries and put that behind some local tools and they can just click the button and get that data. Yes, you can do exactly that within the Postman. All flows can be done, can be shared with multiple people and so much more can be done. Let me walk you through with that. So let me first go ahead and share the screen with you. But before sharing the screen, uh, go ahead and check out the website as well, chaiko.com. I'm pushing up a lot of content there as well. And apart from this, also join up our Discord. Today we crossed 50,000 members on our Discord. So in case you are new, go ahead and check this out. And hope you have done your comment target, just 100 comments, go ahead and do that as well. So let's go ahead and walk through with the postman as well. So how it looks like. So this is our regular postman and what I'm going to walk you through is a simple API request to the chat GPT and we'll be having the chat GPT customized bearer tokens. And I'll show you another example from some APIs, let's just say random user me or any other API. And I'll walk you through how you can use that local tool. It's just right there, right there. I know it is right there on this screen. But yeah, it's well hidden and <laughs> you probably don't know about it. So let me walk you through that how it's being done. So I have created a new collection, we call it as GPT, uh, but feel free to call it whatever you like. I'm gonna just go ahead and add a request onto this one. This is a new request and I'm gonna call this one as uh, chat GPT, chat GPT, there we go. And we would like to send a post request and the URL for that is being taken up from the documentation of chat GPT. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this. This is uh, https colon slash slash api.openai.com slash v1 slash chat slash completion. So I'm invoking or trying to invoke a completion model. Now on top of that, what I'll do is I'll go inside the body, I'll go for the raw and I want the JSON document or JSON data type. And in that I'll select a basic model and I'll go ahead and send some requests to it. So this is the request I'm making. I'm using a bit of an older model because I don't want to pay extra money for a necessary demo uh, request. But feel free to use uh, ChatGPT 4.0 or any other latest model. The message that I'm sending is an array uh, which has two objects as their keys. The first one is a role of system where you mention that what system we are talking about. You are a helpful assistant is the default that they mentioned in the documentation, but feel free to use that. Uh, any other as well. The role is the user which says, hey, share a recipe of iced tea with lemon. So this is the message that I am sending to the prompt. This is all the message part of it and it can be done for any other APIs as well. I'll walk you through and give you example of that as well. Now what additionally you need with the chat GPT, if you go ahead and send this out, uh, I don't think so you'll be getting a response because what you're missing is an authorization token. So we need to send up an authorization token as well. The easiest way to do it, especially in the Postman, is just take your token and I'm not going to walk you through how to generate a token in ChatGPT. Uh, all you got to do is go into authorization, select on that, we want a bearer token. Go ahead and paste this token up there. I'm going to go ahead and remove this token once the video is all done, but that's all. Now I can go ahead and send the request and it's going to give me a response back. So this response is a bit of a complex response. It has an ID, an object, created, model, choices, and choices is an array which has an object of index, message, then further role as an assistant, and then finally the content. 
So you have to drill down quite a lot in order to find out what's going on. And sometimes you want to find other information in that. The whole idea to understand here is that there's so much more going on, like maybe somebody in your team wants to find out just the prompt tokens, how many tokens are being sent, or how many total tokens are being consumed, or maybe just want to have the response. So what you can do is, there are a lot of times exactly same thing happens. You have a database, some people want to get some information from the database only, maybe want to find out how much star they are having in the ed tech as a teacher, or maybe they want to find out uh, something else, maybe want to get sales report, how many sales we have done in today or last week. So there is a query for everything. This is just an API request and same thing can be done with the APIs and all of that. Now, once you have done this and you have got your response, now here's the interesting part. Go ahead and first of all, save this because we'll be using this. That's the important part. Go ahead and save this one up. All right, once you have saved this and you know, and everything is all going good. Now, what we're gonna do is click on the flows. Yes, this is the hidden secret. Flows is something in the chat in this postman, which is well hidden. Good, good job there, postman, well hidden. And you can build your own low code, no code tool in the postman right in here. And the way how it works is amazing. Let me show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, yes, I tried lemon tea before doing that. So we can go ahead and create simply, by the way, you can also discover the flow as well. They give you a lot of AI automation, communication, finance. They have a whole lot of things going on. I'm gonna start a flow which is going to start from the scratch. So I'm gonna call this this flow as uh, YouTube because why not? The flow always starts with a couple of keywords like start and all of this. Uh, by the way, you can go ahead and just delete everything, but this is how usually it starts. I'll very soon uh, show you how you can remove everything and go with that. Now what else you need to know about building this flow is this block. So it has a lot of block elements like sending the request, uh, delay if you want to simulate some of the delay, some of the logics you want to filter out like if this happens, if the request is 200, do this, if the request is 400, do that. So you can build a flow on that. There are some ways of looping through the request as well. There are some output as well. They maybe want to extract some output, send it to the logs, console logs, something like that. So you can do a whole lot of things. As you can see, they give you like a whole lot of things to do. But what we're gonna do in this case is, we're gonna utilize a send request. So the get request that we're going to say, I'll just click here and select a request. And this is where it comes handy when you have already being request being done. So I'll just say chat GPT, inside that I'll select the chat GPT. So this is the point where I can have it. Now each request that you send is going to either have a success or a failure. <clears throat> so I'll just simulate this by clicking on this run button and this is going to send a request to the chat GPT and now I have my data. It shows me the whole data but what interestingly you can do with this data, you can extract and filter out things. This is just a demo. I'll just close this one out and I will show you that how you can actually further polish this data. Now, having just the data is not the goal. It's never the goal for the people who are non-tech or who want to use this kind of a flow. Maybe you want to use it for yourself as well, that's great. But what I'm saying is you can further do things. Now, hope I you can see this, it's really hard to see. Uh, there's a success block, there is a fail block here as well. Can I extend this? No, this one is not. Most of the elements are actually drag and droppable. And best part is what I like is I can change the color as well. I'll just turn it into green. I like that. <laughs> Anyways, now what you can do is you can have what happens on the success and what happens in the fail. Now notice here, what happens in the success, I'll just drag and drop and I'll see what I really want. Uh, maybe you want to have a request or something. I just love to search for it. So there is a select. You can actually go inside the data once you have simulated and can select a particular data. I'll just go ahead and click on this. And now once you click on here, it will allow you to select some data. Obviously, I want to select the data from the body, so hover it, and inside that, there's choices, list is there, and further that, there are four keys inside it, not interested in all of that, so indexes, no, I'm not interested in that. In the message, I'm not interested in role, I'm interested in the content, so I just want this content part to be there. All right, great. Now let's see, let's run it one more time and see what happens and how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and run this, and there you go. It simulates that and everything goes. But hey, what happened after that? Nothing, because you just got the data, but you never mentioned that how this data should look like or how this data should go up there. Now further, you can chain it out further, just like this, that hey, I want to build and I want to log this data. There are so many more ways you can log this data, you can build charts with it, you can build graphs with it, so much more. I just want to right now log this. So I'll just say, hey, just log this one and we'll even open up our console so that we can see what's happening. So let's just clear this all, and I'm gonna say run this, 
and let's see what happens. And I send this request and there we go. It gives us the whole request and recipe. And yes, I know this looks a little bit like, okay, it's done. But what's really important about this local tool is you can save this whole flow and can give it to any of the team member. You can go ahead and fork it. You can share it to the people that, hey, we are in the same company. Now let's just go ahead and share this. And you can use this flow to actually dump the information on, uh, on the console. I'll show you one more and that will actually properly give you an idea of how things actually works and how it goes. So in case you have ever uh, wondered or visited, let me show you that part as well. So there is a nice API, random user me API. So this gives the API data. And people who are not familiar with these kinds of APIs really don't know or how this needs to be worked out. So they want that, hey, through the API call, I want to have this video or an image. I want to see that the image whenever I make an API call from the database. So what you can do is you can just go back onto your collections and inside the chat GPT or the GPT, I'll just go ahead and add a request. And uh, this is the request. All right, good. And I'm gonna call this one as random image. So I know this, this is really nice and I can send this and it's a simple get request and I get this. For me, getting an image like this is a really validation that yes, there was an image. I'm happy with this as a programmer but a lot of people who are not programmer are not happy with this. So how we can utilize the Postman flow in order to make sure that people who are non-tech can actually see the image and have a visual effect with that. Let me show you that. So first step is always save that once you have made the API request. I'll go into the flow and I'll go into another flow. Yeah, why not? Let's make another flow and we're gonna call this one as uh, image. Yeah, not really creative name, but <laughs> we got it. So in the image, let's go ahead and start this. Always starts with an API request. I'll go ahead and select GPT and this one is random image. Now, when the success happens, I want to go ahead and select some data. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, hey, I want to select some data. Path, let's select this. And notice here, when I click on it, it says body layer. It doesn't know what's happening and that's where the magic happens. Once you actually go ahead and run this simulation, now the data is being fetched and Postman intelligently knows what data you want to filter it out. Now notice here again, when I click on this, now the body is being filled and it knows exactly and based on this, it can run the flow again and again. That's hence the name flow. I'll open up the result and I'll open up this key and I want to see the picture and I want to see the thumbnail or medium. Now we'll go with the large. So we have this large image. Now you can throw this as a console, but what additionally you can do is you can just select a data type, which is known as image and not image, my bad. It's photo, photo, not image, not photo, what it is. So let me just search for it. Yeah, this happens. It's, I'm fairly new to this, just explored this. So let's see if we have something. I It is something there, I saw it. There's a record list, date, new, select, regex, number, pool, string. I saw there's something related to photos. Why am I not able to see that? And let me just quickly check this. I know I've seen that. Oh, got it. It's output actually. So first what you want to do after that is select the output. And once you have this output, this is where you see this. Look at this drop down. So it has a video, image, URL, even markdown. So you can have a markdown. I love the markdown. Anyways, so we can see that this is the image. So it should depict the image. By the way, we have the bar chart, line chart, gauge. You can have even entire table being dumped down. That would be really cool. But let's select the image for as of now. Now, anybody who is non-tech obviously can come onto this flow. He wants to find an image. This is just an example, but there could be other examples like somebody wants to see the sales number. He can just run, click on one run and he will get the real data from the database just only in the read mode and we can just run this. So I'll just run this and there we go. The photo is there. How good that is. And this is just an example in the flow itself. It's really a nice loco tool and I hope you can see the, the way how you can actually build it for other people. In most of the local tool, you have to run the queries and all of this. And the ability to do all of this from the Postman is really nice because you have all these API endpoints being marked up already. All you got to do is come in the flow and use the same API endpoints and the collection flow that you have and can take it and use, use that in your flows. This is really, really nice. 
And not only that, if you just drop down this output, you can do the output on the logs as well. But hey, we programmers love to do the logs on the console, but other people who are non-tech, they don't like it. They love to see the data. So either it's a text, you can just dump the data on the text as well. And uh, in the numbers, Boolean, JSON, if you want to just have a URL, notice here the URL is there. But people don't like URL. People like to see the visual effects and all these impacts of this. So we can just go ahead and change this. By the way, you can just go ahead and select this and delete this. And if you want to change it something, you can change it definitely to something else. Let's try something which is funny. So we'll have location, date of birth, login. Do we have login counts as well in this one? No, the salts and password only. Do we have anything interesting here? I don't think so. The name, location, city, street, passcode. Let's see what happens when we try to have the passcode. And further, the passcode is being added as something that is not supposed to happen. Like we would have a gauge of it. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. But let's see what happens. That's the fun of programming that we can have it. Uh, the provided data was not a number. It could have been displayed as a gauge. So yeah, we need a number. The data that's displaying, I think it's a uh, text. So yeah, <laughs> it doesn't know how to convert this. Let's see if we have more data. I want to see or want to have a number here. That would be really nice. Page. I don't know if page would be something like that. Oh, page is this. Okay. And let's see if we have something more. I'm just trying to have some fun with here. <laughs> and again, anyways, you get the idea. Location, we'll just grab country here. Anyways, it's it's not really fun. I cannot expose our own production grid APIs that we have, but you get the idea. You get the point that how you can have just the text or the image, or you can just have entire YouTube videos. <laughs> That's really nice. So you can have the entire YouTube videos. Obviously, this is not going to work because, hey, it's not a YouTube video. But you can have the entire link of a YouTube URL and can display it here, like what more people want. So this is it. Go ahead and try to use the flow. It's probably one of the less used feature in the Postman, but I recently discovered it. And I think this is one of the great way to build low code, no code tool within the organization. The programmers are already having the endpoints in the Postman. They can just quickly convert that into a flow. Once you do build five, six flows, it's really not a big deal. You can just create like hundreds and hundreds of flow within the weeks and can give it to your sales team, marketing team, and all other people who just want to have it. So yeah, it's really nice. So I thought this is an interesting information and thought to share it with you. In case you have enjoyed it, do let me know in the comment section. And I'll surely bring up more such awesome information. Go ahead and hit that subscribe and I'll catch you up in the next one.